Yo, Ryan O, behavior analyst and creator. All things behavior analysis is what you'll find on this channel. We like to nerd out on psychology here and today extrapolating a little bit more on a previous video called The Functions of Behavior. In it, we leaned upon Cooper, Heron, and Heward's definition that describes function-based definitions as one that, quote, designates responses as members of the targeted response class solely in terms of their common effect on the environment. So far, we're talking about behavior that is influenced by the environment, specifically through changes that occur after our behavior, consequences as we call them. So for an example, let's look at ways in which you may escape an aversive or disliked situation or stimulus. Now quickly, defining an escape contingency, Cooper, Heron, and Heward state a contingency in which a response terminates or produces escape from an ongoing stimulus. So what are some examples of this? Well, in the morning when you wake up, if it's from an alarm clock and you turn it off, most likely that is a perfect example of an escape contingency. It means that the sound of the alarm, that is the aversive or dislike stimulus is occurring. And as a result of you engaging in the behavior of pressing it off or snoozing, it then has changed the environment. There's a new effect that your behavior has on the environment immediately as it removes or terminates that aversive stimulus, that alarm. Said simply, you have escaped the alarm sound as a result of your behavior, or your behaviors produce an environment in which you no longer experience or have successfully escaped that alarm sound, at least temporarily if you're a chronic snoozer. Now, there's a lot of other examples that many of us will experience day to day. Let's say that a telemarketer is calling and it's coming in on your phone and you answer, but as a result of hearing the automated message, you realize, ah, like I've just answered, I've confirmed I'm a living human on the other end. And that aversive noise then leads to the behavior of you turning off, hanging up, whatever it may be. And as a result of that behavior, you now have changed your environment. The telemarketer is removed or you have escaped the reverse of call. There's a lot of different day-to-day -day things that we do to escape things as well. Some may be more impactful than others, but before I share a few of those, this video is brought to you by people like you, patrons, people that support my efforts financially. And for three years now, hear me out, I have lost money spent a lot of time, I've lost a lot of money actually, creating these videos because, well, I think they're important, this field's important, and they're important people doing important things that need to be heard by people like you. So if this is something you're in for, consider supporting me on Patreon. There's some other perks and stuff. It's linked down below. Uh, I also have a lot of continuing education classes at thebehavioracademy.com that help fuel this channel. So back to the video. As I was saying, there's a lot of day-to-day -day things we do to escape things as well. Some may be more impactful than others. Let's say that there's a situation where you see someone walking down a street or while you're at a social event. The very sight of someone that you find aversive can be something that leads to a multitude of different available response patterns that you can engage in. Something like leaving the event or walking across the street or perhaps simply just turning around, you know, so that they're out of sight. Maybe it's faking a phone call that you have to take. The point is, is that it does not matter what the form of the behavior looks like, how it looks when you engage in this escape response. All that matters is if it results in you being able to escape that aversive stimulus in the moment, to terminate it in the moment. Then, if that's the case, the function of the behavior would be called escape. Now, there are some subtleties that we could get into that are very, very important here. Notably, the type of stimulus that you're escaping can have a real impact on who, what we are, and how we behave. Something as simple as getting into a hot car, turning on the AC, and escaping the heat may seem pretty trivial to most. And many of us don't even think about it or experience like negative side effects with that. But what about an aversive stimulus that comes from an abusive or a traumatic experience? If we suggest as behavior analysts that someone's behavior is under escape maintain reinforcers and in there, well, you're not gonna be wrong, but I think you're miscommunicating or you're risking miscommunication and misunderstanding at best when you could really just stick closer to the original definition of how we diagnose, label, or communicate behavior through this definition of the effect on the environment. And that's my proposed solution here. First, it's just sticking to a clear explanation of the function through our definition. So when you're presented with an unsolicited, say, DM from an acquaintance, Jill then closes out of the DM. If the aversive stimulus is terminated because of Jill's behavior, then we've just accurately described the effect on the environment maintaining the response. But you didn't have to resort to lumping it all together of escape maintain behavior, you gave the details. And I don't always understand or get why we should be less precise, but if you have to, you can say it in a way that at least conveys some of this, such as Jill's behavior is maintained by escape in the form of blank. Add your descriptor there. Because as a science of behavior, it requires precise terminology so that we can categorize and understand the larger functional relations or patterns of human behavior. 
If you want more of this or even why I think this is a line of thinking in large functional categories is confusing sometimes, you can check out some of the other functions of behavior over here on my channel. Uh, and I hope you learned something. Like, share, subscribe, it actually makes a difference. There's a lot of free resources down below that you can go explore as well too. That's your daily feed.